I did some power testing with my DeWalt thickness planer not long ago, and uh, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link down in the description or up in the corner if you're on a mobile device. And I just wanted to see if, how much power it was going to draw before and after a Shelix cutter head upgrade. And um, I wanted to continue that test, but this is kind of a specific topic that I didn't think belonged in the previous video. This relates to the impeller that's um, next to the motor in this planer that's intended to shoot the chips out of the back when you're planing with no kind of dust collection system on there. And when I first bought this thing, I did not have an actual 4-inch hose dust collection system. I just had a shot back. And this kept blowing the shot vac out of the, out of the back just because of the, the force put out by that impeller. And so I started running it without the shot vac, and it would just fill up so fast anyway. And it was shooting chips 20 feet across my shop, and they were static charge, just sticking to everything. All my machines were just covered in a layer of dust. I called up DeWalt to ask them if, uh, if there was an issue, uh, maybe, uh, maybe a, a ground was loose or something. And the person I spoke with said, no, that's just normal. They, they, um, they do that if you don't have any kind of a dust collection system installed. Well, I decided to get a dust collection system. I never had one before and I went out and got an inexpensive Harbor Freight model and did an upgrade on it. So it's actually a, you know, a good 0.5 micron filtration device, two stage system. I have a video on how to do that as well. I will also put a link somewhere top or bottom. And, uh, and that worked out a lot better. But then I got to thinking, if I have this thing on the back that's sucking the chips out, I probably don't need that impeller that's pushing the chips out. So uh, I decided to do some power testing with the impeller removed. And I've been running it that way for probably three or four months now with no issues. And I think it's a pretty good upgrade if you have a good dust collection system connected to your planer. Now, for the testing, I used the same nine and a quarter inch wide piece of red oak that I used in the previous test. And just quickly what, my, what the results were is that at no load, uh, I'm not going to put the whole uh, whole test video on here just to keep this short, but at no load, um, with the impeller installed, the planer was running about 11 amps after it got up to speed, ran for about 30 seconds. So 11 amps with the impeller, no load. And with the impeller removed, it was about 6 amps at uh, you know once it got up to speed. So that's about a 5 amp difference at no load. Now once I put the this board through there, and took a sixteenth of an inch pass, one full rotation of the wheel, it was about a three amp difference. I won't get into the exact numbers because if you haven't seen the previous one, you might just get blown away by how high they are. I'd recommend going back to watch that if you haven't seen it. But um, about a three amp difference, three amps lower without the impeller than with the impeller. So uh, if you have one of these and you're maybe having some power issues or you just want to reduce the power or you just want to reduce a little bit of noise because it is a little bit quieter without the impeller in there, uh, we can uh, take a look at how to take this thing out. If you're not concerned about your warranty or other, uh, any other maintenance issues, I think it's fine. I don't think it's going to break anything. But, um, you know, it's up to you if you want to make this modification. If so, let's take a look at how it's done. To remove the impeller, you start by taking out these four screws in the top. and then remove the top cover. Next, remove these three red screws and the dust chute. If you have the dust collection adapter installed, take that out by pushing in the detent pin and rotating. To access the impeller, remove these two screws and three clips. There's one here and there are two underneath that you can't see, but they're pretty easy to feel. There's clip one, and down here are two and three. And then this just slides right out. And there's your impeller. To remove the impeller, you need a half inch wrench. Yours might be pretty snug the first time you do it. Mine's been on and off a few times, so it, it's reasonably loose. And to make life a little bit easier on yourself, once you get it loose, you can just spin the impeller rather than uh, trying to rotate it with the wrench. And then after the lock nut comes off, you have a washer. 
and then the impeller slides right out. Notice that the side with fewer blades is on the outside. That's the inside. And now you just put everything back together in reverse order. And the only real caution I will give you here is to make sure that you get all three clips. One, two, and three. Because if you forget that third one, you're going to hear a rattling sound when you're running the planer. Speaking from experience. And the last step is to save yourself a lot of trouble down the line. Label a bag or a box or something and put all these parts in there so you don't lose them and they don't become separated. And now you're ready to rock and roll.